The Simpsons took the world by storm. With their alternative takes on sitcoms at the time, they blew up in popularity and solidified itself as a series that went on for far too long. 31 seasons? Like, really? And like any popular thing at that time, that thing needed to be made into a video game series. The Simpsons had a lot of licensed games to its name, going all the way back to the NES and MS-DOS systems, all the way up until PS3, Xbox 360, and even the terrible mobile games that require ridiculous amounts of money to be able to progress further into the game. I recently played every single Simpsons game across a two week period on my stream, and you will have seen that I completed all except for two games, with good reason. But I really wanted to like convey my thoughts and put them all into a single video, rather than doing an individual video for every single game. That way it's a lot easier to just contain and do all at once. Remember how I said, like, 30 seconds ago, that games were really difficult for no reason other than to make sure you get your money's worth out of a game? Well, this is the game that comes to mind whenever I think of that particular circumstance, because this game truly does fuck you over in every possible way. In Bart vs. the Space Mutants, Bart learns of the alien's secret plan and is the only one who knows about it because no one else will believe him. The aliens desire world domination. To achieve it, they need to get everything of a particular item, and Bart's goal is to remove the items the aliens desire from Springfield. This game more or less is just a big platformer collectathon. You're required to pass them by removing a number of items from the level, and these items change from purple items to hats to balloons, exit signs, and even nuclear rods. Now this game isn't the worst on the list, it's far from the best, but I I'd say it's probably not a very good strong starting point for Simpsons games. The concept of this game in theory is actually a really cool idea, and it controls pretty well overall. And the music is mostly the same track as repeated throughout the entire game, and it changes a little bit from level to level. But honestly, this game would probably be actually okay if it weren't for the very last level. The last level requires you to collect all 16 nuclear rods within the power plant. There are 5 floors and 3 elevators. One elevator will take you to all floors and the other two will take you to specific locations on different levels that can't be accessed with the main elevator. And then there are also doors from different areas within multiple floors that will take you to exclusive areas as well, which are only sometimes accessible by taking the elevator into the specific location, and this is incredibly confusing, and it just does my fucking head in. So after collecting 15 out of the 16 power rods, you'll be running around for half an hour looking like a dumbass. The 16th rod is actually being held by Maggie, and she will not hand it to you till you collect all the other rods. Maggie shows up at a random location in the map itself, and if you do not remember the location, then you will never find her. Honestly, this is a really stupid game mechanic, and I utterly despise that they did this because no one would ever think that Maggie has the last rod, because every other rod is just throughout the entire map, so it just seems like such a strange thing to put in. I don't know, this game wasn't awful once you understood the general premise of it, but that last level really just brings it down so fucking much. I'd say the main problem with this game is it's just like a bit confusing and pretty challenging overall, but it's not a bad game if you just take out the last level. Now this is how you do a Simpsons game. A four player arcade game made by Konami. The Simpsons are in Springfield and they encounter a robbery being done by Mr. Burns and Smithers. The gem they are trying to steal flies into the air and lands in Maggie's mouth and she starts using it as a pacifier. Smithers takes Maggie and it's up to the rest of the family to get her back. Fighting through Springfield you eventually get to Mr. Burns' mansion and get Maggie back. Now, this game is really good on its own, but it really shines when you get four people together and just have a great time wailing on the enemies. Uh, unfortunately, I have no friends, so I don't have any footage of it. <laughs> I see this in uh, like barcades and uh, just general arcade places, but the single player game is still fun on its own, but four players is just so good, because all you're doing is just beating the absolute shit out of everyone. Trolls are quick and fast, levels are fun, and the graphics still are quite good to this day. This actually used to be on the Xbox Live Arcade and PS3 stores, but due to licensing agreements changing, it's been taken down from both of them. This game is often regarded as one of the best Simpsons games, and with good reason. This game is really good, it's so much fun with friends, and I'd say it's one of the best Simpsons games that we have on here. Remember the old MS-DOS system? We got one single Simpsons game for it, and it was absolutely terrible. Bart's House of Weirdness is a fun game if you like obscenely challenging games, and offers absolutely nothing else outside of that. The game has absolutely no music at all, and as a result I have nothing to put in the background of this part of the video. The sound effects are terrible, it controls awfully, 
and as I said before, the game is ridiculously hard, to a point where you take hits as you enter a new area of the game. There's also parts where the enemies are impossible to dodge like this. There's one part where you have to run away from Mr. Burns' hounds, and I don't think it's possible to jump over them or to kill them, so it's just... What were they thinking when they made this game? So the general idea behind this game is you have to collect these tokens in each of the eight areas. Uh, the only one I managed to complete was the one in Mr. Burns' mansion where you have to get the tokens so you can go watch a movie. There is a cool to uncool meter in the bottom left hand corner and if you get hit too much you become uncool and die. And on top of everything there are numerous instances where you can get stuck and the only way to get unstuck is if you die. Now that's not to say that this game doesn't have a few good points to it at the very least. For example, if you hate fun, the graphics are okay, like they're better than both games that preceded this which is a big plus, but I uh, don't think that's quite enough to endure the absolute pain and agony that this game provides in terms of actual gameplay. Oh I forgot to talk about the story of this game, Bart gets sent to his room and then... yeah. That's about it. Look, all in all, this game is pretty bad. It's one of the two games on this list I just could not complete because it was just way too hard. Ah, I see we've now entered the handheld games era. Bart Simpson's escape from Camp Jetley has Bart and Lisa going to camp to find out the camp is run by Mr. Burns' nephew, Iron Fist Burns. You need to go through the whole day's activities, which include capture the flag and food fights and nothing else. Bart and Lisa go to Mount Deadly to shut off the power switch and shut down Camp Deadly. Now, I feel super mixed about this game. On one hand, the game itself isn't terrible and certainly a step up from... But it's not really a good game, it would have been fine when it came out, but it doesn't hold up today. The controls are funky, the music is pretty awful, and the graphics are about as good as what you could expect from a Game Boy game. Now for my gameplay, I had this weird green outline that always happened and I didn't know how to turn it off until after the marathon was over, so I feel pretty stupid. Camp Deadly falls into this weird line that I can't tell if it's worth playing or not. It probably isn't overall because there's only two types of levels. The capture of flag levels are pretty tedious and sometimes the enemies are really frustrating to deal with, while the food fight levels are bullshit in their own right because you can't really react in time for when the enemies appear on screen and they appear both in front and behind you. I don't know, overall it's a it's a less bullshit game than House of Witness and Space Mutants, but it's not overall a good game still. Boy, there sure are a lot of Bart Simpson games, aren't there? Bart has won the chance to participate in a round the world scavenger hunt that has been rigged by Smithers. Mr. Birds is doing this because the Simpsons caused so much trouble to him over the years and he wants them gone. So I may have just ripped all the gameplay footage off my stream and didn't realise there's a small bit cup on the side, so just ignore that exists. Also, the cartridge I was playing on seemed to not work properly, so some of the text is a bit fucked. I apologise for that, but you'll get over it. With five different minigames, Bart must travel to China, the North Pole, Egypt and Hollywood and stop the various members of the Burns family members from stopping Bart from completing the challenge. So overall, this game is really simple and I'm just going to cover the five game modes because that's pretty much all it is. The 2D side scrollers, these change through the levels and is absolutely the weakest part of the entire game. It looks terrible and it controls terrible. Puzzle minigames, you need to slide the puzzle pieces so they are in the correct numbered order. These are pretty fun, but I'm terrible at puzzle games, and it was like 2am when I was playing this, so I think this comes down to more of a me thing. I think it'd be pretty fun under normal circumstances, to be honest. Picture matching, you find two of the same card. Pretty basic principle, pretty fun game overall. The Simpsons Trivia. This is pretty great. It really tests you if you know the show, and references some great episodes. This is the highlight of the game for me. And then the final one is a final boss for each area. You just have to defeat him. It's a 2D side-scroller, but it actually involves like a boss fight. Still not great, but the levels are pretty short overall, so it's not too bad. Um, some of the bosses are a little bit stupid, but overall this is actually pretty fun. Honestly, for a game that is entirely comprised of mini-games, this is actually quite a fun game. Uh, the side-scrollers are a little bit shitty, but overall I'd actually say this game is pretty fun. The part of the video where we're going stuck getting into the more lengthy games, it took me a bit longer to complete. Bar vs Space Mutants was a 4 hour journey, but that game actually fucking sucked balls, so whatever. Bar vs the Juggernauts is another entry into handheld consoles, and this is honestly a significant improvement to the previous game. Bart has, once again, entered a competition for a large sum of money, up to $100,000. To win, he has to complete games against the Juggernauts, a ruthless group of people that are trying to stop Bart from winning the grand prize. So before I move on, I want to actually issue a 
literal epilepsy warning with this game. There is a minigame which flashes incredibly rapidly and I don't want anyone suing me. So if you suffer from epilepsy, skip to the next game on the review list and there'll be a timestamp on the screen now. Alright, you skipped. Alright, let's continue. This game has six main modes. The goal of the game is to do the absolute best you can in each of the modes to get the highest score. There's a minimum score you need to be able to reach the next section of the game, but if you want to complete the game and actually get the final cutscene, you need to play pretty much perfectly for the entire thing, and you can't lose a single life. Let me explain. So there is a basketball game. You get $500 for each life you have left in addition to the money you get from shooting each of the hoops. If you die a single time in any of these mini games, you will lose that $500 and you will not be able to get the final cutscene. So essentially you cannot die. Well, there's also the skateboarding mini game, which you have to knock the juggernaut who is holding a shield either above his head or at his knees off the podium. So you start off by going down a ramp and you have to dodge all the items, but once you reach the jump, that's when the bullshit really starts to kick in. When you jump, the height of butt is completely random. Sometimes you'll be high enough to kick him in the head, and sometimes you'll be high enough to kick him in the shins. Sometimes you'll be high enough to fly completely over him. Now, this is a problem because there's no reliable way to actually get the correct height, and there's also no reliable way to know where the juggernaut is going to be holding his shield. So, if you die, which by the way, if you die at all, you cannot get the ending cutscene, you lose. It will no longer be possible for you to get the ending cutscene at all. Well, skateboarding's not really a thing. There's also this wrestling game, which you have to knock the opponent off the podium twice to be able to win, and then Barney twice after that. This is really easily cheese if you just bash the headbutt button. Like, there's no other way to do this. It's a very easy game. There is a second fighting mini game, which the juggernaut on top of the power plant, you have to knock him off using the poles or something. I'm not really sure what they are. But this can also be cheesed by just spamming the jab button because he can't hit you and you can hit him. It's insanely broken and makes this really easy. There's a couple platforming areas, but honestly, they all suck just like all the other games up until this point. This is particularly bad because the jumping physics in this game are absolutely fucked. And you can only jump or you can do what's called a sprint jump. You don't sprint into a jump, you hold down two buttons and then you jump further. It's really fucking stupid. Well, if you don't really like any of those other mini games and you prefer something old school, then you might like this mini game. You run around hitting those bell thingies at the arcade, except instead of hitting a bell, you hit the juggernauts and they go back to the top of the bell. You basically just have to keep them from going to the ground. And finally, we have Herman's Escape. You start out by parachuting down from the sky, avoiding enemies throwing knives at you. And then after landing, which you have to land really slowly, otherwise otherwise you die. After landing on the ground, you're thrown into a minefield. Hitting a mine causes a lost life, and the mines are really close together and very difficult to navigate. It's not impossible, but just really, really tough. You also have the juggernauts in the background throwing water bombs at you, which knock you around and can knock you into mines. It's pretty stupid, but it's not impossible once you kind of get the hang of it. Honestly, this game is like many of the other games at this point. The mini games are okay, but the condition of which you need to finish the game is ridiculous. But when you do finish the game, Bart gets a Trocosaurus, so that's pretty cool. Where this game absolutely shines is the dialogue. It's really funny, and I would suggest that you... If you're not going to play it, you should at least watch a playthrough of it, because the dialogue is really, really great. Remember when I said that I could only not complete two games on this list? Well, here's the other one. This game is fucking dreadful to play. I think that this may be either the worst or second worst game on this list, and you could probably guess who the other competitor is. And you might be thinking, where does the problem with this game lie? The graphics are okay, and the controls aren't good, but definitely not the worst game, so what gives? Well, let me explain. Whilst this game may not have any mechanical or graphical problems for that matter, this game is just so boring. See, the thing that separates this game from every other game up until this point is that whilst it's not really been a good game, it's been an experience. The problem with Bartman meets Radioactive Man is that it's so boring that there's nothing to experience. And that to me is a sign of a really poorly made game. To me, a incredibly boring game is worse than a bad game, but it provides a bad experience. I know that may sound a bit weird, but that's just how I feel about games in general. So let's just get right into this. Radioactive Man is being captured by an evil guy whose name I never found out because I never beat the game. Fallout Boy goes to Bart's treehouse and recruits Bartman and starts his journey. You have to beat each of the bosses in the five different areas to have Radioactive Man gain his powers back and defeat the final boss. Now, as I said, this game really sucks. It's boring and the soundtrack is 
terrible. It's not the hardest game out there. It actually is quite lenient on the amount of lives you have, but nothing happens in this game. There is just nothing else to explain, no, no other word to use other than boring for this game. I almost fell asleep playing it on my stream, this is not a joke, you can see it in my face that I just hated playing the game. Now I was kind of considering playing this game my own time to make an actual good review, but the problem is is that I enjoy fun, so I just never got around to it. As for some other points of contention, the game's background is mostly just copied and pasted throughout the entire game in each level. The enemies will be placed slightly different each time. And if you go high up in a level, you often can't see where the next platform is because the camera doesn't move down until you are at the bottom of the camera. It's really stupid. Honestly, the only good thing I can think about with this game is that the flying level is actually quite fun. But really beyond that, there's nothing else going for it. Bart's Nightmare continues the trend of mini-game games. Now, I heard from a lot of people that this game was pretty tough but not quite as hard as the other game that's similar to this one, which we'll get to later. Bart needs to do his homework, but he's tired and falls asleep and has a nightmare. The only way he passes his test is if he stays asleep and collects the eight pages of Slenderman. Wait, wrong game. Overall, this game is actually a pretty interesting concept, but it falls flat on the overworld. The overworld is just filler for more gameplay and doesn't really seem to be necessary. I find it quite difficult to navigate, and also quite easy to die, and some of the pages can take many minutes to find. But as I've always done with these minigames so far, I'm going to just go through each of the minigames individually and give my thoughts starting with the Indiana Jones minigame. I never really got that far in this minigame, it's sort of like an escape from the tomb thingy. It's not really clear what you have to do. I always died on the pillars and one time I died to the Maggie statue shooting a dummy at me. And I vowed to avoid this minigame unless there was no other option. The itchy and scratchy area, and honestly this is pretty easy to cheese, except for the kitchen area. I found this area really hard to get past, it's quite insane how much damage they do to you at that point. Itchy and scratchy at that point have like, one shot weapons, and if they get a shot off, it's pretty much impossible to avoid. Do you guys like drugs? Cause I like drugs. Right here we have LSD. I have no fucking clue what's going on in this game. You gotta destroy germs and then cowboy shop and get the page, what the fuck? And then we have King Kong ripoff. This is split into two parts. The first part is you have to do enough destruction and damage to the city without getting too much damage done to yourself. And then the second part you have to climb up the tower. Now I didn't realize for a really long time that the tower actually you could climb up the sides to avoid the giant bugs that knock you off. Uh, I felt pretty stupid when I realized that but I never actually finished this minigame. Also another thing about this is that the attacks that they throw at you while you're climbing up the main area are really tough to avoid because you move pretty slowly. Now the highlight of this game is absolutely the Bartman minigame. This is really fun. You fly high in the sky as Bartman and spam the slingshot while trying to get to the end and get the page. It's a really simple concept with a few bosses along the way. This is a really great minigame and I think it's quite well done. At some point after collecting all the pages or taking too much damage, Bart will wake up. His grave relates the amount of pages you get. Lowest being an F and the highest being an A+. I got a D+, which is very accurate to my school life. Now I find the main problem with this game is absolutely the overworld. It feels like filler content doesn't really add all that much to the game. The soundtrack on it is pretty low tuned so it doesn't blare out your ears and it's nice and chill as well. So it's got that going for it, but beyond that, I find the overworld just to be kind of a waste of time. Okay, this game is really strange. I can't figure out if it's a bad game, or if I'm terrible at the game, or both. This game is really similar to Lemmings. They have mice in your house, and you need to lead them to the trap designed to murder them. This game features 50, 50 really long puzzles. Fucking 50 puzzles. More or less, there are 10 on 5 different floors, and I just use cheats to be able to get to the next floor after completing like 1 or 2 puzzles. I find the main problem with this game is it's balancing, like some puzzles will be obscenely easy and some puzzles will be really really difficult. It feels like they kind of just made the level and then chucked them in a random place, not accounting for like, progression. Some had no clear way of doing it, like there was this one level I spent like an hour on and I couldn't for the life of me figure out how the hell to beat it. I died so I just skipped it. Now as I said before, I'm really bad at puzzle games, so I can't figure out if I'm bad at this game or if this game is just completely unbalanced in a lot of sections. Now for some of the good things about this game, the graphics and the music in this game are actually quite good. Pretty easy background soundtrack with a nice looking game. 
This is kind of the point where they realized they could make games look decent as well. The SNES games from here on out, and even some of the GBA games actually look pretty good. I really wanted to like this game because it's a pretty simple concept. It's similar to Lemmings, which I played as a kid and I actually enjoyed. But I think that there's just a lot of problems with this game in terms of a gameplay mechanic aspect. It's just like, it just makes this game not work very well. However, that being said, I do think that some people would enjoy this game if they put the time and effort into it. Part of the Beanstalk is essentially a direct ripoff of James and the Giant Beanstalk, and I have now just realized upon reading this that I spelt James with a G, so it is now called Games and the Giant Beanstalk. I've also heard that there's like 30 different tellings of this. I've heard James and the Giant Beanstalk. Hey, wait a minute. James and the Giant Beanstalk. Jack and the Giant Beanstalk. I really don't know what it is. Wait, I'm thinking of James and the Giant Peach. Fuck! Bart goes to sell the family cow at the market, but he trades it in for... Homer, tell your child what you bought when I sent you to town to get some insurance. Mm -hmm. Curse you, magic beans! Oh, no, stop blaming the beans. And a slingshot. After returning home, Homer eats them, but then spits them out into the yard. The next day, a beanstalk is in the backyard, and Bart climbs to the top. At the top of the beanstalk, there is a castle, and Bart adventures through the seven levels to retrieve riches for his family. So yeah, basically a complete ripoff of Jack and the Giant Beanstalk. Bart playing Jack, and Homer playing both the troll and Bart's father. Lisa isn't shown in this game, so that's not a loss, and Marge is his mother. Now as I said, I streamed this game. My chat hated this game, but I honestly quite enjoyed it. Overall, I really don't know why. The controls are clunky, and the music is the same soundtrack for the whole game. The graphics are your typical Game Boy graphics, and the story is a complete ripoff of a popular fairy tale that's told to children everywhere. I don't think anything in this game, except for the music, is particularly bad, but nothing is really good. So it just kind of falls into this weird middle area that's like not bad, but not good. It just exists. With that being said, there's actually a few interesting levels in this game. There's a stealth level which you have to collect the riches from the castle and stay out of sight, otherwise the giant will squash you. There's also a requirement to get to each level, you have to pick up a certain amount of gold coins. Usually there's heaps to go around, so it's not particularly something you have to worry about, but it's just something to make note of when you're playing. Man, I had a really good time playing this, and I don't really know why. Maybe it's because it came from stuff like Krusty's Funhouse and Bart's Nightmare, and I didn't particularly like playing those games. I'm really not sure. As long as you kind of have to play for yourself to get an idea, but for me personally, this game's alright. This game is sort of like a sequel to Bart's Nightmare. It's essentially the same game with different mini games, but no overworld. So it's a plus already. When I went to go play this game on my stream, many people warned me about this game being incredibly hard and incredibly awful to play. Now, while I do agree to an extent, I don't think this game is all that bad as people remember. There is a science fair at the Springfield Elementary School. Bart is lured into the virtual reality section and he has to complete all six mini games with the lives given to allow the ending where Homer gets thrown into the virtual reality instead. I'm really sure what Homer's doing at elementary school, but you know, whatever. Putting it short, this game is a harder version of Bart's Nightmare with no overworld. And just like Bart's Nightmare, I'm just going to go through each of the mini games in this review video. We'll start off with Dino Bart. This is a platformer where the Simpsons characters are cavemen and Bart is a dinosaur trying to escape. This mini game is bad. It's ridiculously long and the enemies are so strong that Bart's variety of attacks does not make it so you can actually kill them most of the time. Baby Bart, you are Baby Bart and you hear an ice cream truck outside. It is your duty as a baby less than a year old to go outside and get ice cream while putting yourself in potentially deadly circumstances. You use Baby Bart's ability to swing on trees and get to the end. The problem with this minigame isn't like the controls. It's pretty difficult, but honestly the worst part about this minigame is the infuriating ice cream jingle that blares at you really loudly the entire time. Oh my god, I wanted to stop playing this game whenever I got Baby Bart's minigame. Pig Bart, the other two minigames don't sound bad enough already? Oh, this one's a doozy. It is my second most disliked minigame. Bart has become a pig somehow, 
and you need to escape from the factory where they're gonna process you into meat and Homer notices you when he gets the meat and eats you anyway. My god, is this mini game awful. What you have to do isn't obvious at all and the jumping is terrible. There's even a section where I'm convinced where it's not possible to make the jump. I could not get past this jump no matter how many times I did it. However, as awful as that sounds, it's nowhere near as bad as the swimming tunnel bar to mini game. Now, this sucks. This sucks so much. The swimming tunnel mini game has by going down a tube at a water park, avoiding numerous obstacles, including but not limited to children, random ass objects, knives, and most other things that you can possibly think of. Oh, and also, Bart's father has too much of a dump truck fat ass that he can't get through the tunnel sometimes. Now, this only occurs when you have the split pathways, but the pathway you need to take is actually shown at the top about 13 milliseconds before you actually need to make a decision on where you need to go. So it's not reasonably possible to actually pick the correct path. It's so frustrating. Basically, the goal of this minigame is you have to get out of the tube and into safety out of the water park before the time runs out. But if you make any mistakes, you're basically fucked. The second last minigame to cover is the motorcycle minigame. And honestly, I got this one time and I failed pretty much instantly, so I can't actually give a proper overview of this one. But the absolute highlight of this game was the tomato and egg throwing minigame. I love this minigame. And I actually didn't think I played Virtual Bart until I got to this minigame and I realized, holy fuck, I've played Virtual Bart. The goal is to hit every kid in Bart's classroom to ruin school photo day while avoiding the teachers. This minigame is really fun, the music is so good, and it mechanically works really well too. I actually think they put a lot of effort into this minigame, and while the second level is much harder with the characters moving closer and further from you, as well as left and right, it's honestly still really fun to play, and I'd be interested in a whole game based around this entire mechanic. Honestly though, if it weren't for the tomato throwing minigame, I would have smashed this cartridge. Now this is definitely the most innovative game on this list, and I applaud the people who came up with this idea. Wait, shit, it's the same company that did all the other games. Itchy and Scratchy's miniature golf madness has you playing as Scratchy, hitting a golf ball to the end while also fighting off Itchy, who is determined to fuck you up. Now, I wouldn't say this game is the best game on this list, but it's certainly the most creative game. I mean, a mini golf platformer fighting game, and it works! It actually works really well. While this game could have a little bit of tweaking to make it quite good, the controls are kind of bad, the graphics aren't great, but again, Game Boy. The music is pretty repetitive, but not annoying repetitive. Overall, it's a pretty decent game, and the whole idea behind this is quite creative. I'm such a big fan of how this game plays. The levels are really fun, and just the whole idea of a mini golf platformer fighting game is just so cool. Like, I really want someone to actually make this game again but have like some perfection tweaks, make the controls decent and not so unbalanced in favor of Itchy trying to fuck you up. Honestly, this game is quite fun. This probably is either my second or most favorite game on this list so far. This is pretty good. The Itchy and Scratchy game aims to recreate the world of Itchy and Scratchy fighting each other nonstop. There is nothing more to this game and this will be a very short part of the review video. The entire game is going to an area which I honestly don't recognize and while playing as Itchy, you gotta beat Scratchy. Then you do a boss fight against Scratchy. There is nothing else to this game. I don't really know what to talk about here. Like, just the generic stuff, music is okay, gameplay is okay, some of the bosses are bullshit but none are terrible. My main complaint with this game is just that it's a bit unbalanced. Some levels are ridiculously easy and others are quite hard and I don't really know why. I just wish there was more to talk about with this game, it's just so bland and basic. I think a lot of people actually knew about this game. This is Virtual Springfield, the Simpsons game that isn't really a game but more of a virtual tour around Springfield. Let's start off with the bad. This isn't a video game. This game lacks basic video game components like objectives, progression, and a few other things. I suppose my only main complaint about the game as a whole, in modern day anyways, is that adding unlockable areas or new stuff would be pretty cool, but beyond that it really isn't anything to complain about. Now I think when this game came out in 1997, it wouldn't have been anything special. 
They were only in season 9 and many people still consider that to be the good Simpsons. So the references they were making was stuff people were familiar with at the time. Controls the British crown, who keeps the metric system down? We do, we do. Who leaves Atlantis off the maps? Who keeps the Martians under wraps? We do, we do. However, because The Simpsons has become so... And... Also... Many people find themselves going back to the old episodes to relive what Simpsons was great at doing. Creating stories that meant something while also making them hilarious to watch. This is where Virtual Springfield is amazing. Simpsons nowadays has become so bad and so terrible, it's great to go back and play it. And it captures so much of classic Simpsons. The best parts, the references, so many gags. I cannot possibly hope to explain them all in this video. When I was playing this game, I felt like a kid watching Simpsons for the first time. Some of the stuff had me absolute tears from laughing so hard, and some of the gags were just so hilarious. If you haven't played this game, get this game if you love classic Simpsons. I would highly recommend playing it. It's easy enough to obtain, and pretty much any computer can play it at this point. Now while this game doesn't have proper gameplay, I would be so bold as to say that Virtual Springfield, in this day and age, stacks against the likes of The Simpsons game and even Hit and Run. It could be that I just miss Older Simpsons, but I don't care. This game made me remember why I loved Older Simpsons. This is the final game that was handheld exclusive, Night of the Living Treehouse of Horror. And every handheld game up until this point was absolutely awful, so it would be expected that this one would also be terrible. I'm actually going to surprise you all with this. This game is fine. Not much to go on in terms of the story, but this is a game where they finally start to understand how 2D games work and make them enjoyable to play. Unfortunately, this is kind of the end of the 2D era, so they kind of learned a bit too late. Night of the Living Treehouse of Horror features eight levels, somewhat referencing the Treehouse of Horror episodes. And despite it sounding like a Bart Simpson game, it actually features all of the Simpsons family as playable characters. The controls in this game are quite good, except for the jump, which makes very little sense. I don't really know how to describe it, it feels more like a floater than a jump. But if I move at all, it takes me 10 years to move to a different direction. But beyond the problem with the jump, all the controls in this game are quite good. Now the concepts and levels behind this game are really cool. Except for the second last level. Every single Simpsons game has to have one completely trash level. It's one of those maze levels where you have to find all the objects. It's kind of like the last level from Bart vs. Space Mutants, but this one might be worse. You have no form of defense, no weapons, no way to protect yourself, and you are the shitty robot Homer with terrible controls and broken physics. Maybe puzzle games just aren't my thing. This game actually features a really cool code system. They had it in Krusty's Funhouse, but it was kind of weird. You put in the code and it takes you to the beginning of the level you want, so you lose no progression when you die. I think this is probably the peak of 2D Simpsons games. I don't really classify the arcade game because that's sort of a different entity, but this game is actually a relatively solid game. And if you were going to play any of the 2D games, this would be probably the one to go for. Not a lot of people know this game exists. It was the first Simpsons game to be on disc and it was the first 3D Simpsons game. And uh, let me just say, oh, oh, how did they make this so bad? Let's get the good out of the way. The dialogue in this game is hilarious. The quips they give out in this game are also hilarious and resemble some of the good writing that Simpsons has had in early seasons. Also, this game has great meme value. I personally think this game would be really hilarious to play with a couple of friends. The way it controls makes you run around the area at the speed of sound. It's chaotic, but kind of in a fun way. Sort of like Mario Kart Wii, if that's a fair comparison. Like, you know you're gonna get fucked in the ass, but you're okay with being fucked in the ass. So you might be wondering, this game sounds like it might be okay. What's wrong with it? Well, if you have eyes at all, I have bad news for you. Now, if we were ranking the Simpsons game from the graphical standpoint of most appealing to least appealing, by about the distance between the Earth and the Sun, I think this game would be the worst. 
Like, I don't even know how they did this. It's so ugly. Some characters aren't even recognizable when they appear on screen. The spectators have two cutouts. The maps are terrible. How do they do this? Like, what the hell even happened here? It's like they handed the game to the intern and said, do your best and we'll just publish it anyway. The game is also hilariously unbalanced, which I completely understand is ridiculous to complain about since this isn't like Overwatch or anything. It's The Simpsons Wrestling. But just let me explain. There's a few characters that are a little bit broken compared to all the other characters. Mr. Burns and Smithers, absolutely broken. Smithers himself is incredibly powerful with his moves being fast and he can throw a fish down which trips you over and he can pin you and make you lose. But on top of that, Mr. Burns throws fucking nukes into the ring and they do insane damage to you and nothing to Smithers. Kang and Kodos, absolutely broken. Now while the Asazi alien is a big weakness, it's still very difficult to beat these guys. They have a laser gun and a barrage of hits that does incredibly huge damage and makes it impossible for you to escape or retaliate. And finally, we have Flanders. Flanders is fast, strong, and he can summon God to strike lightning down on you. Oh, and on top of that, he gets a second life whenever you kill him. So you have to pin him twice if you want to win. Now, what other problems lie with this game? Of course, the story! The story of this game is that Springfield is having a wrestling competition, and everyone is competing because they want to be the champion of Springfield. That's it. I just read the blurb on the back. Look, this game has some great meme value. It's utterly hilarious to play, and I stand by my comment that playing with a friend it would be really, really fun. But just don't play this game solo. I had my expectations low, and I was still disappointed. <laughs> Ah, uh, The Simpsons Road Rage. A lot of people played this game as a kid, usually on like an arcade cabinet, like the cinemas or something. Oh wait, that was Crazy Taxi. Oh wait, this is basically the same game. No, for real, this is quite literally Crazy Taxi copied and pasted to have Simpsons characters in a Simpsons world with Simpsons cars and voice lines. They actually got sued by Sega and lost. Radical Entertainment got sued for ripping off their game. It's really fucking hilarious. The Simpsons Road Rage, just like Crazy Taxi, has you driving around, picking up people and dropping them off at the desired location. The longer you manage to keep your streak of being on like a single run going, the more money you get on that single run. This game, interestingly enough, also has a mission mode where you have to complete 10 missions, but they kind of just all have the same objective of driving to a specific location at a given time or destroying a certain amount of vehicles. It's actually not very well put together, it's kind of boring after like the third or fourth one. There are a couple of challenges in there, like the log one was pretty tough, but beyond that it's like, eh, it's not very good. Like I guess mission mode was okay. Like, it, it, it would have been cool to see a few more alternatives here and there, but I don't know, it just was a bit bland overall. I guess their main focus of this game was definitely the Road Rage mode, which has you driving as whatever character you want to pick, each character has their own unique vehicle, and you just drive around and pick up characters and drop them off at their desired location. It's a really simple game with a really simple concept, but the problem with this game is the amount it costs to unlock everything. It costs one million dollars to be able to unlock everything. For a speedrun to get one million dollars, it takes over eight hours. For a casual player, it would take days. Honestly, I don't think this game is too bad. Like, it's a bit bland, it's a bit boring, but the amount of unlockables you have is pretty cool, even if they do cost a lot of money. But like, it, it just gets a bit boring after a little bit. Now, they actually made a second release of this game on the GBA version, and this game is really spot on. Now, the diversity of mission mode having unique missions, Simpsons Road Rage GBA fucking nails it. Same sort of concept, you have 10 individual missions, but they're all unique. Like, they all have their all unique objectives and different tasks. It's really, really quite good. This is probably the only GBA game on this entire list I would recommend because it is actually a legitimately fun game. Like, this is really, it flies under the radar. It's quite good. Like, they have objectives such as driving on really thin roads, figuring out correct paths along the way, and even you balance on a ball. Like, how fucking crazy is that? As for the graphics, the graphics are alright. You're about what you'd expect from a GBA game. It's not overly great, but you know, it looks alright and you get used to it after a while. But this this game is kind of like the textbook definition of don't judge a book by its cover. It's really quite good. Oh, 
Oh, this game, Simpsons Skateboarding. Alright, let's get this over with. For whatever reason, the Skate Fest has come to Springfield and everyone is excited to compete for the grand prize of $99. No, literally, that's all there is for a story with this game. You just read the blurb on the back and you've got everything. Like, what? why are these characters skateboarding around? I thought they had jobs. Like, you can make 99 bucks in a few days. What the fuck? I'm gonna set this part out to be the good and the bad. You know, nice and simple. Alright, so all the good stuff is... Now all the bad stuff. More or less everything about this game is bad. Not a single thing is good. The music in the intro is a shitty remake of the Simpsons theme. Every character is awful to play and some can't even do basic kickflips. Until you level them up significantly. The way to level up your character is to complete objectives in the game. Objectives give a little bit of money and you can put that money towards leveling up your skills for 5 cents each. There are three main sections to this game. The skill school, time to trick contest and the skate fest which is the main mode. Skill school is just completing new tricks that you've learned. They progressively get harder and harder as you get through the game. Once you get to Crustily Studios, some of them are pretty much impossible because you need to do about 100 tricks to be able to do everything and some don't even fucking work. They're like, I'm not even kidding, like it gets to a point where the tricks are actually genuinely impossible to complete in the given time, like you can't beat it. Now time trick contest is just getting a certain amount of points within a given time. Now this is the complete opposite to skill scores, it can be cheesed super easily by finding like a half pipe and then just mashing buttons, and then like tapping up and down on the joystick to be able to just grind to the other side of the half pipe and repeating the process. You're able to complete every single one of these without any problems. And finally we have Skate Fest, which is the main mode. A bunch of objectives that are available to complete, but you only need to complete the first two objectives of each level to move on to the next level. By the way, there's 10 levels in this game, and doing this shit is so bad that some of the objectives are, I swear to god, impossible. They probably aren't impossible, but fuck how the hell is a new player meant to figure out this. I am not kidding when I say this game is awful. It's ugly, the music's terrible, the objectives are ridiculous, and the controls. Oh god, the controls. The controls of this game are so fucked on so many levels. It's so, so bad. Now, some of you may think that I'm a bit of a fan of The Simpsons Hit and Run. You could say that. I have played the game just a... Just a little bit. I have accidentally eaten dog food once because I thought it was chocolate. Just a few times. But this game actually does have quite a deep story, so there's a lot to go over with. A new buzz collar has hit Springfield. There are strange black vans all over town and whilst cameras have been spying on many residents, Homer leaves it's Mr. Burns behind all of it and learns that the black vans are just pizza vans, but learns of a new video game and tries to get it but Marge has destroyed all of them, so he runs errands for Professor Frank so he can see Trocosaurus, because Trocosaurus is way cooler than a video game. As Bart enters Trocosaurus, it goes completely rogue and then Bart gets abducted by a strange light. Lisa gets on the case to find Bart and successfully finds him aboard the Sea Spanker boat, but he's only speaking gibberish and mentions cola and crab circles. And Marge tries to figure out how to get him back to normal. After speaking with a few residents, she discovers a connection between the cola and the, the first crap time I rode circle. in a water car. Marge gives him a can of cola and he naps back into reality. Apu proceeds to investigate the situation further and finds the cola trucks bringing in Buzz Cola from the museum. Apu and Bart investigate and find Kang and Curtis behind all the events happening. The lost cameras are here to film a reality TV show featuring Springfield, and the cola will turn everyone into zombies. I like it. But now being back to normal is out to stop the alien's diabolical plan, and learns the laser guns are being distributed to people around the Springfield, so when the cola hits, people will have laser guns to fight each other with. Bart takes a laser gun as proof to Principal Skinner, for whatever reason, who confiscates it. He then takes it to Krusty, and Krusty has already distributed the laser guns, so Bart has to stop them. However, even with Bart destroying the laser gun stands, it is revealed that the cola is spreading through the water supply, and people will go mad. It is up to Homer to save Springfield by destroying the alien spaceship with nuclear waste. And there you go, you have no reason to play this magnificent game anymore. This without a doubt is the most popular Simpsons game. The Simpsons game was very close, but Shah just kind of beats it out of the water. It's also better in every way, Shah has a good story, it's a Grand Theft Auto clone, you can't go wrong with that. Hit and Run today even holds up quite nicely. The graphics look good, the controls well, the story is still great. I see a lot of people play this on their stream for the first time, still nowadays. It's still a good game today, like if they release it today, people might complain about the graphics a little bit, but as a whole, it's pretty good. I am definitely not biased in my opinion anyway, but this is my favourite Simpsons game, and I think it is a lot of people's favourite Simpsons game. And finally we have The Simpsons Game. This was the last game released on console, and last game released at all because there is definitely no other game past this game. 
in this game, the Simpsons family has gotten powers, apart from Maggie, of course, because Maggie's never involved in any game. Bart can float as Bartman, Lisa can control the hand of Buddha, Marge can tell people to do whatever she wants, and Homer Simpson does his best impersonation of Clive Palmer. Wait, sorry, that's an insult to Homer. Now this game is quite interesting. It has three different versions, my casual playthrough was on the Xbox 360 version, which has an overworld with a ridiculous amount of collectibles. Like, I'm serious, this has so many collectibles, it took me days to find them during my casual playthrough, even with a guide. There's 75 for each character, there's so much. It's kind of overkill, actually. With the PlayStation 2 and the Wii versions, it kind of has the exact same game, except there's no overworld. It's more limited just to being The Simpsons house and backyard, but it's more just level by level progression more than anything. And I've never played the PSP version, but apparently it's somewhat like a hybrid of the two, but I've never actually seen any gameplay of it, so I can't say for certain. Now, in my opinion, I think the 360 is the best to play casually on. Like, it controls well, it's, well, it's a little bit longer, and you can't skip any cutscenes, but as a whole, it's pretty alright. But if you only have the PS2 version, and for whatever reason you haven't updated your consoles in the last 30 years, then it, it works alright, it does the job. It lags a little bit, but it's better than the Wii version, because the Wii version has the jump button bound to the same button as the action button, because the Wii remote has very minimal buttons on its controller, and for whatever reason, this game on Wii does not support a GameCube controller input. Despite having all the properties there and everything's there, it just doesn't. Now, I've heard about the PS3 version, I know it exists on the PS3, but I have heard that someone once broke their PS3, as in it kind of just stopped working and never started working again by playing the Simpsons game on the PS3 version. I can't say for certain if that's true or what happened there. It could be a problem with the PS3, but uh, I would be skeptical playing on it, to be completely honest. If you're going to play this casually, 360 version is your best bet. Now for the graphics and all the good stuff about this game, the graphics is quite good. The game is really, really funny. Like, honestly, this probably has better humor than Sharp, but it kind of falls flat on its face towards like the actual diversity of the levels. It's a little repetitive. I, I don't know how to explain it, but there's just something a bit off about this game. It's a good game, but it's not as good as Hit and Run. But the graphics are probably its strongest point. It's a gorgeous game. It looks very, very nice. And apart from the complaints I have on the Wii version, the controls as a whole is also pretty solid on the 360. Everything just makes sense and flows pretty nicely. And that was every single Simpsons game. Now I'm going to be giving them a ranking on my whiteboard, which you guys can't read properly. First off, we got Bar vs. the Space Mutants. You know, it was their first game. They tried their best. But did they really? I'm going to give it a D-. minus. Simpsons Arcade. Did they try their best? Certainly they did. This is an A. Bart's House of Weirdness. One of the strangest games I've ever played, and also one of the most shit games I've ever played. This one's going to be an F. Camp Deadly, it's not bad for a GBA game. Is it GBA? I don't remember. It might be Game Boy Color, or well, whatever, it's all the same thing to me. I'm going to give this one because it's a little bit on the redeemable side for actually being okay, even though it's really repetitive. This one's going to get a D. Bart vs. the World, this game was actually quite good and flew really under the radar and I didn't expect it to be quite as good as it was, but was let down by the platforming. I'm going to let this one slide though with a C. Bart vs. the Juggernauts had seizure-inducing flashes on the screen for some fucking reason. This one's going to be a D-. Bartman vs. Radioactive Man, fucking horrible game. Not bad for gameplay, but boring. Nothing happened. Boring as fuck. So boring, this is a F. Bart's Nightmare, good game. You know, okay mini games are a little tough, but uh, I think what let this game down was the overworld. I'm going to give this one a C-. Krusty's Funhouse, I'm not good at puzzle games, I'll admit. But this game just kind of felt 50 levels of more or less doing the exact same thing. It's quite literally a copy and paste of Lemmings. I'm going to give this one a D. Bart vs. the Beanstalk plays one track for the entire game, but as a whole, game plays pretty okay. I'm going to give this one a D+. Virtual Bart. Now, this game is actually quite fun. It's completely carried by the tomato throwing mini game because literally nothing else in this game is actually fun. But honestly, No World is an improvement over Bart vs. whatever it is, Bart's Nightmare. So, I'm going to give this one a C+. Itchy and Scratchy's Miniature Golf Madness. Probably one of the most creative games I've ever played. I applaud the creators for me coming up with this, even though they came up with all the other shitty games on this list. But they actually started to redeem themselves with Miniature Golf Madness. So this one's going to get an A. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. This is going to get a B+. Can't fucking reach that far. 
Itchy and Scratchy game, more or less the same game over and over again in five different forms. Kind of boring, kind of shitty, and it's really, really unbalanced. So, for that reason, this is going to get a D+. Plus. The amount of flab I have on me, I can't bend over far enough, but now I can. I can actually reach this one. Virtual Springfield. Virtual Springfield is a historic game that shows off all the good stuff in The, the Simpsons early seasons, because this was... Made basically when the early seasons were coming to a close and the shit season started, basically season 9 and onwards. This game is pretty top-notch, honestly. It may not have been much when it came out, but it's very, very good nowadays, so this is going to get an S. Treehouse of Horror. I forget what the actual name for this is, I think it's something like Night, Night of the Living Treehouse of Horror, that's what it is. This game was when they started really getting the hang of 2D games, you know, they, they really started to grasp on. Unfortunately, this was the last 2D game, 2D game as well, so it kind of, kind of didn't matter. But uh, nonetheless, it's still a pretty good game apart from one level, which is the Homer Robot level. I'm going to give this one a B+. Simpsons Wrestling, it's a terrible game to play by yourself, but if you're playing it with, uh, with friends, it's a good meme. You know, it's a solid meme. I'm gonna give this one an M for meme because I don't think I can really rank it anything else like it's just kind of its own category you know Simpsons Road Rage Road Rage is a game that I never really played much of as a kid but a lot of people did and I think a lot of people over over overrate this game quite hard because of the nostalgia factor but it's not a terrible game you know the grinding aspect is pretty terrible and it's literally a crazy taxi clone that they got sued by Sega for so this one's gonna get a B minus Simpsons Skateboarding this game is one of the worst games I've ever played I snapped the disc out of anger. Like, it was so bad. So bad. This is gonna be an F. Road Rage GBA. This is all but an improvement on the original Road Rage. The mini games and missions actually being different objectives rather than deliver person to thing or destroy object makes for quite a quite a fun game, honestly. This is gonna be a B plus. Simpsons hit and run. I may be biased on this game, but hey, so many others are. Uh S. No worries. The Simpsons game. This game is the last game to come out on console. It's probably the last game The Simpsons uh, license uh, IP will ever make because of, you know. But we'll get to that in just a moment. But this game is okay, you know, EA development, and I think this is like one of the last games they developed that was actually good and didn't have shitloads of microtransactions. But something about the game is just not quite as good as Shah, but it's still a good game. And they have a great impersonation of Clive Palmer, so I think this is going to be an A. And finally we have Tapped Out, the game that ruined every single game from ever being made ever again and is nothing but a cash cow, honestly. I'm going to give this one an F-. And that is my ranking for every single Simpsons game. Yeah, this was a, this was a journey, it was interesting. We had to play through some, some, some bad games, some uh, good games. And then some very, very terrible games. But, uh, yeah, as a whole, you know. <laughs> Fuck The Simpsons.